McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have the legend, the return favorite, Pratt Daddy himself. Oh my gosh. Father of almost two. Yes. Spencer Pratt, welcome to Juicy Scoop. Oh, I'm so – I woke up actually in Just real tingling. life tingling because I looked at a, a notification for a crystal sale and it said they use code JUICY and it was just like a sign because no one knew I was coming on. I was like, this is just I love such it. a good I little love energy. It. And I saw a scooper in – Hawaii. Oh, I know. You guys she, were in Hawaii. Tell me she, about that. She was so nice. Yeah. I feel like more people actually come up to me as Juicy Scoopers than anything we've ever done, which is so entertaining Makes me, to me. so happy. Me more because I love taking photos Aww. with people. Good. <laughs> Yes. Oh, Can I'm you so not excited. spill? Uh, I'll work on it, but I don't Thank take you. medication for ADHD. Oh, you're the only one. You're the only yeah, one. Yeah, like you know. Um, right, I'm, now I got to focus. Okay, focus. You were in yes. Hawaii. Yes. You guys looked so cute, and um, I was going on Heidi's page, and I saw her beautiful pregnancy photos that she did, and I just wanted to say there's a lot that I'm jealous of of people that are younger having babies today. One, that you can put your baby on Instagram, you can exploit them for likes, all that kind of stuff. The other is that I didn't really do this. And then one day I was at my sister's house and she was like, you know, my neighbor's a photographer. He's like an artsy photographer. And he offered to take pregnancy photos of you. And I was like, all right. So like no hair and makeup, nothing. I go over to like the Palm Desert, like you know, he normally, he normally like photographed like homeless people in Joshua Tree <laughs> for black and white photos. Please tell me we're about to see it. We are. Okay, good. Yeah, I was like, this, give the review. Here you go. The, oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> you guys are so oh my God. ugly, so awful. <laughs> oh, I want to describe to the people driving in their car right now. They put me in like a, like a robe, just the stomach sitting. It looks like I'm about to take a shit, but I'm sitting on an office chair. I have and you're maybe pops pregnant. on. I have, like, just, they put me with some weird glasses, even though I didn't wear glasses. I just have, like, a greasy bun. Absolutely awful. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, go, let's go back to Heidi's. Oh, wait, no. That, you, should do a, <laughs> you should do a main post of that. Oh, one. my God. So bad. Um, I also just saw this today. Did you see this? I didn't. I love okay, it. Okay, this is the Real Bad Fashions, an Instagram uh, account I follow. And they said, choose your fighter, okay? And they, they, they showed all these photos of paparazzi, I think, set up post photos of Teresa Judice, now whatever her new last name is, and her new husband, Louis, from Real Houses in New Jersey, and you and Heidi throughout the years. And look how many similar poses there are. Here's one. Why you turn so much? Look at your photo. Look here. Oh, my gosh. This budget. Okay. So, um, I, I like the big screen, though. So, I mean, they seriously have studied you guys. I'm so flattered. Because you did write the book. You literally oh, wrote a book, yeah. How to Be Famous, and how to do these paparazzi in love photos. Here, you guys are both standing with the leg kicked up, kissing on the beach. And then here, the, the finale, Dip. And this one, you guys are kind of being funny because you have your masks on. Yeah, that's recent too. So you know, no, that's real. How life. do you feel? Are you real, flattered was... that people copy oh, my you as God. a couple? I love being in any post. So this um, now I got to follow the real bad fashions <laughs> and start <laughs> liking and commenting. Um, I'll guarantee you these are stage photos because we just recently did stage photos on our. <laughs> Kauai trip and we were talking to Asia our good friend paparazzi yeah and we're concerned about other paps getting the shot and he's like oh no those days are over I'm like what do you mean he's like the game's so different like you can't just there's no just accidental paparazzi anymore it right. costs too much to travel. There's very rare, you know, he's a top guy in the business and he's saying that he'll send in photos of people in Hawaii that he was like, oh, this would have been easy money back in the day. Right. And he, there's no deals, no money. And he lives there. So there's nobody traveling to that looks like what, Mexico. So your photographer lives in, in Hawaii. Yeah, he was he's the Hawaii, Hawaii guy. In, oh, he's the Hawaii guy. Yeah. And so you let him know we're going to go. Oh, we wouldn't have gone if he wasn't there. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then you know the day he's going to go. So that day you might put like a little product in your hair. Oh, no. Heidi 
she got a hair she got her hair blown out the morning before we left to, to get to, on just, the beach. just go straight to the pap setup. Oh my god, I love. Well, you so we used much. to with budget yeah. back in the day. We would travel with the paparazzi, bring the hair and makeup. Like if we go back to three shots, we go yeah. that Cabo trip. This one where, oh, no, where Bahama, she's on top of you? That's Bahamas. So definitely. This one. Hair. Yeah, that's Cabo. We had, yeah. you know, you don't just get hair like that in the in the hotel bathroom. That's, <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> professional. Yes. So, yeah. So, yes, that is a setup. They're a paparazzi. Of did not course. Just risk and they, going And to, they're in Greece, so it's like probably mm. really worth it, too. There's so oh. many people in Greece oh, right now that are worth it. I would that shot. Yeah, you would have flown to Greece 100%. just to get it. Yeah. I have the camera. I love it. Um, yeah, very very juicy. Okay, now I texted you over the weekend and told you, please watch this Netflix doc. This is Untold, which is, it's like a, a little series of short documentaries kind of in the sports world. The girlfriend who didn't exist and his name, this guy's name is Manti Teal. Don't Tio. look to me. I've, I watched Man- it for four hours and okay, still can't Manti- say Tio. I'm just calling him Manti. I feel like everyone just calls him Manti. And I remember the story when it came out in 2012 because I was at Chelsea lately and it was a topic. And we were like, and the guys were very aware of who this guy was because he was the top player at Notre Dame at the time. And he was, they were going for the world champ, not the world, the uh, national, national champion. championship. And also he was up for the Heisman. And there was this compelling story about how his grandmother, who he adored because he was a total family guy from Hawaii, he was a Mormon, but then, you know, was at Notre Dame. And his girlfriend died the same day and he still went out and played this incredible game. So that kind of helped get him in the running of the Heisman. Anyway, then it was revealed that the girl never existed, never existed. And then we want now 12 years later, 10 years later, the real story comes out, which it's the classic catfish. But at the time, I guess catfish wasn't on TV or he wasn't aware of it, of how catfish works. But this girl had contacted Manti from Facebook and they were both from Polynesian descent and she was really cute. And she goes, Oh, I I go to Stanford. He's like, I'm at Notre Dame. They start talking, they talk on the phone, everything only to eventually find out that there was no girlfriend. And it was this other Polynesian guy who was once Roninen. Yeah. Who was once a football player himself and had created this character. And as this character, he had uh, pursued other men in in a online situation as this cute girl he knew this girl from like his high school took her image and then created facebook pages and stuff and then and then would like talk to them on the, on the um online and on the phone but never facetime all this time so what was your initial thought of this is a two part like 4 hour thing my first thought was ah oh. I don't, like my list of things I want to watch ahead of this, you know, is, that I don't get to so watch. So you were annoyed with me. I was like, ah, oh, I got to have homework. I felt like homework. So. Yeah, okay. But it was an excuse to be like, Heidi, I got to, you're up on Gunner and our whole lives. I'm just going to go lay in bed and watch this because <laughs> I have work. This is a job. <laughs> so I got in bed, put the AC on, and then started <laughs> watching it. I was like, this is... At first, I was like, "What am I watching?" You know, you have no idea. And then it gets so good, it's and it's so like good. one of my favorite docs ever. But the whole time, I was so jealous. I was like, "How do I have no story this good in my life that I have never masterminded anything on this level?" I was so jealous of Ronin or whatever. Excuse me, Ronin. It was just like I don't know what I've really tried before I got here to like think it through and go in conspiracy <laughs> mode and. And try to be like somebody back. I didn't. That's a problem with my like ego. Yes. Back like 2012. Like I this could have happened. I have no. I don't know what happened from like 2002 to 2018. I you have mean no in, idea. The world in the or world? In the world. In the world. Oh, so okay. this was like I never yeah. heard this story. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so interesting. But I started really thinking like, even after watching the doc, and it kind of ends abruptly, and I'm. I just was like, hmm, did he know? You know, I was like. I totally believe everything 
he said uh, 10 years later, which, by the way, uh, I was like, did he get a nose job or just his teeth done? So I it's investigated. Teeth, for sure. It was just his teeth. And then he no longer plays professional football. So he just thinned out. But he's extremely good looking. He's married to a woman now. And now he was always straight. But he there were people thought he was in on it and thought it was his way of creating a fake girlfriend because he was hiding the fact that he was gay. And um, so it was just what I thought was so interesting is, like I said, I remember when it came out and I didn't really get it. And I don't think that's just kind of, I kind of literally like saw myself in the Chelsea Lately writer's room, like when the story and what we were saying about it. And we definitely made it a topic and we definitely made it made fun of the fact that like this guy lied and said he had a girlfriend and died, you know, and I was thinking as I'm watching it, he did not win the Heisman. Thank God. Because so had, had he won the Heisman and, and the second runner up or whatever, that would have been because they definitely they said he was a really good player. But the people that vote for the Heisman and the runner ups are like sports writers, almost like an Academy Award. So it's not necessarily totally based on like how good of a player you are. So because he had such a compelling story and he was such like a likable guy and he came from this hardworking Hawaiian family and he was super into his faith. And then the sad story all added to him becoming that much more like in the media and popular. And so I was really glad he actually didn't win. Cause I think that would have been way worse to, oh, to wonder like, like didn't, um, didn't Reggie Bush have to give back yeah, the Heisman? Yeah, yeah. And didn't OJ also win the Heisman? I'm I'm pretty I'm, sure I'm he not did. Gonna go and guess <laughs> but I'm just one. saying like I just feel like thank God they that they didn't, you know, and even if that was the case, he still did nothing wrong. I mean, if you watch the doc, watch it, you know, with an open eye, if you think maybe he's not being completely truthful today, I do. But like, you know, it was just one of those things where, you know, people are like, "Oh, you know, I how people speculate on it and they were showing like all the all the people all the talking heads talking about it, making jokes all the people that made like memes and funny things and he's crying 10 years later about how hurtful these jokes were and all i could think about was like thank god they didn't use your talking yes head. like they didn't use like one of my talking heads being like really oh, okay like he's not gay or something like thank god because you do this stuff and then it's like 10 years later you're like even sometimes a week later, uh, the story gets cleared up and no one bothers to, like, retract what they said or or whatever. And then you see how much it affected him. And it affected him, like, getting the best football teams and the draft because people, he had this, like, he had some major stink on him as and then a personal the anxiety thing. he's dealt yeah. with. Oh, and then it, but then I started thinking, like, so what they didn't talk about was, like, was there sexting? Like, you know, like... Mm, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, like that was a question. I was like, is, is uh, where are the naked photos back and forth? You know, are they, so it's, there's just no, it's just like, you know, friend. I, well, I, I, it was I, so good. I was like, and then it, the fact that he could do that voice and he had to do it behind the, on Dr. Phil, he had to go behind the, yeah. like he's told Dr. Phil, the person being Shanae, was it Shanae? But the girl, Lene. Lene. Yeah. Uh, so the guy being Lene went on Dr. Phil, but said he couldn't do the voice being watched. So he had to go in the corner. And I was like, this is. But then I thought, I thought, it sounded, I legit. thought it sounded just like the girl, yeah. you know, and um, there's a, there's a podcast. And I think there's also a little documentary called like um, Hollywood Con Queen or something. And it was about this. um Guy who was like, I think he was Asian, but he did this elaborate con where he would approach people and he acted like he was this female executive. He had several different kinds of personas and he would, but he would go after like um, lower people in Hollywood, like a stunt man and be like, hey, I would like you to coordinate the stunts on this film that we're doing in Thailand or something. And then that person was like, just getting on the cusp of getting the business and we get all excited and go there. And then, but then as the woman executive, sometimes that person would like try to have phone sex with this guy. And it was a really elaborate thing, but, but this person was able to do different male voices, different female voices. And I've told the story before, but when I was just out of SC, 
I, I met this guy at 12th Street. Do you remember 12th Street? Bar and Grill in Manhattan Beach. Was that around in your day? Anyway, it was super fun on Sundays. I loved your SC post, though. Yeah. I was like, that was, because I say that all the time to people at SC. Yeah, we'll USC. I we'll did go, a post oh. about how fun at USC used to be. Yeah, yeah. I read the list. So I was like, okay, checking off most of yeah, them. But. Yeah. But anyway, I go to this thing and it's like all, you know, vo- white, tall volleyball surfer types, right? And there's this shorter black guy. And we start talking, and I can tell he's gay. And so, of course, we're, like, hitting it off. He's making me laugh. We're boozing. We become friends. We start talking on the phone, and he starts to tell me that he gets hot guys' numbers, like hot straight guys that live in Manhattan Beach, and says, do you want to be in this music video? And it pays and whatever. So then he would get the guy's number, and then he'd wait, like, two weeks. And then he would call after he had a few drinks and have a girl voice and call these guys and be like, oh, my God, how do I have your number? I'm so wasted right now. I've been drinking mimosas all day. And I'm dying because I have a body glove bikini shoot tomorrow. So then the guy was like, Ooh. like, you know, who am I talking to? And then you'd have phone sex with them. And over and over and over again. And so then I would see him out and be like, you know, and he'd say, he'd like, I fucked that guy. I fucked that guy. But he meant just on uh- the phone. He, and only yes. one guy did he meet in person. So, and the uh, one guy goes, "I know it's you." Like they, he met through like a friend, but he was calling him, having phone sex with him all the time. And all of a sudden, the guy's like, "I think," and then he like goes, "Hey, if you worked that hard for it, go for it." And he leaned back and let him blow him. So, on a, <laughs> I, I, that was a little. I wasn't ready for that. Um, yes. So I try to open all my DMs on all my platforms, whatever. And anytime there's like, you know, creepier DMs, I always you know, I have my one buddy who is all into creepy everything. And I always just feel like you should reach out to my best friend, uh, Mikey P. You know, like if you want, like I'm married, so I don't want any. Oh, you mean like. You know, any, any sleazy type DM. Girls. Any Slutty DM. girls. Yeah. Any, any DM. Okay. I, that's just. Not just to end it right there. I just connect him to, and so Mikey like just loves love this, and so he goes, <laughs> you know, he's talking yeah. to one of these, you know, girls that came through this the DM Passover, yeah. and goes and meets at a, at a bar, and he calls me, and he's like, "What the f?" I'm like, "What?" He's like, "It was a dude," <laughs> and I loved it so much. But so, yeah, that's a whole... Well, also you know. in watching this... They <laughs> and then I literally said, so you, you guys, it didn't work out between you? <laughs> so, I mean, I think this happens yeah, a lot. I mean, yeah. then all the catfishes that came, it was always that, you know, it was a lesbian presenting herself as a man to a straight girl or, a, you know, a, you know, all that stuff. It was never... That's what catfish is, is people presenting. And it's such a fun game for the person like and it's and for this person um eventually you know they get in touch with their sexuality and gender and everything but this time he was this guy that was kind of forced to be in this football family and whatever and this is how he just loved being this other identity even though he really really fucked with this guy's life and his you know he was such a good person and so he was like just so heartbreaking but i was like rooting for if this was like a scripted movie, the girl that whose image he stole, I was like, why don't you guys just get together? I, like, I, you're so cute. Like, and I was hoping to hear from her in the doc, but I did some research and she was just like, no, like it office. was an awful situation. I felt terrible. I did not want to be famous. I didn't ask for this and I don't want to clear it up 10 years later. So they, the producers did try to. To have her participate, the, the image who he stole, but she didn't want to. So how this one's on sports. Yeah. It's produced one of the names of the producers that does this is Ben Silverman. Yeah. And who was a former NBC chairman for a minute. Oh, yeah. I, I interacted with him a few uh, experiences and I thought, wow, wouldn't it be good if they did a doc on you? You know, like. Yes. That's like, I hope they do on somebody that's untold, like Hollywood executives, because there are such good stories Oof. I think that's gonna come mm, these guys have to die it's gonna be like a solid it, no sooner than four or five years from now will we start really 
getting, getting those up. in. Yeah, they have to fall completely. They have to have no power like a Harvey Weinstein in order for someone to step up and like do the dock. Like otherwise it's yeah. just too it's just too hard. Yeah. yeah. But, um so. but anyway, it's really juicy. And I and even though I kind of told you the story, I'm telling you, you'll, you'll still really like it. Oh, I told my mom. I, yeah, I how just, how it'll like, be? It'll be. It was this. really good. Okay, um, this is a little update. Um, are Breaking you familiar news. with the story? I am. So Nene Leakes had filed a lawsuit against Bravo and she, and Andy, or she named Andy. She named her co-star Kim Zolciak from Real Houses of Atlanta, saying that you know there was discrimination. The N word was used. She was. Uh, other people got spinoffs and she didn't and all this other kind of stuff. Anyway, um, then she was like tweeting, ne- really like telling stuff. And I'm like, is she in the middle of a negotiation and hoping that they'll like fold by being like, I have, she goes, I have taped audio, uh, wait till I share the audio and everything. Well, just now they said that she's dropped her discrimination lawsuit against Andy Cohen and Bravo and NBC Universal and the production company True Entertainment for now at least. So she dropped it without prejudice, which means she can bring it back at any time. And I don't really understand this motive. I don't know why that she, why. I guess maybe they they mm. weren't ready to fold. Maybe somehow she's thinking she will be hired again. I don't what maybe do you think? Maybe they gave her money. Cause in my past when yes. I have I'm not gonna say that exact same um conglomerate yes but uh we had a situation and you know you get a production deal and then all of a sudden you know which nobody has to know if you have a production deal and then all of a sudden you're like you know we don't need to go to a court for this oh you so you're thinking maybe they didn't give her money but they gave her a guaranteed yeah which, you, show? which never like we had two two separate situations where we got shows that never happened Ooh. So you get a spinoff or you get you get a you get six episodes that never happen but you get paid with two different conglomerates. Well, I remember when Kristen Chenoweth told me like she was working on some show, some scripted show and like a light fell on her and she was very very physically hurt for a long time and I was like, "Well, are are you suing or what are you doing?" and she's like, well, no. I mean, I think they're going to give me a, a variety show. And then she got a variety show. No, there's never been no variety. Oh, show. she should have. She blew it. I think you it's got, hard. I, you got, I, you I, gotta, I, I wasn't. Listen, I thought it was a mistake that she ever brought the suit. I thought it's a very hard thing to prove, and I just think it's very hard. And then I also think you're screwing yourself for future work because it's like the Mark Cherry, Nicolette Sheridan thing where she went after him and she like really didn't work. That was from Desperate um, Housewives. She tried to say that she was killed off and it was a big, long thing. And the media, I, I just think it's a really hard thing. I think she was so talented. I think she was such like a, you know, the forefathers of the Housewife franchise. And I think she was talented in script and stuff. But I think it's just hard to prove that like someone really kept you from getting work during two years of COVID and the fact that like Ryan Murphy didn't put you in any more things. So I don't know, but maybe you're right. Maybe they did go, okay, Nene, what is it that you want to work? I want to work again. Okay. You have a, but I, I would think her people would be like, no, not just a deal. We want like a guaranteed six episode Thing that will air all about like, pops. Ne- like Nini's life today. I oh my I, god! I would tune. The, I mean, that's she is a that star. Is juicy. I think that's maybe what happened. Maybe they said because I know she just really wants to to work, yeah. and maybe she, they were like, "Let's just do this." She is talented. Well, I mean, it's kind of a win win for both of them. We I don't mean, get sued. Put her on and with you... Kim. Nini and Kim like take oh my take God. America. Yeah, well, Kim's never spoken about it. And I'm like, she speaks about everything. So I think her attorneys were like, Stay just don't even, you know, say anything. But nobody else has ever maybe she has witnesses that are we're gonna speak and be deposed, but like I spoke to, you know, a producer and stuff that said they that they never heard Kim speak. Like that, that she's claiming. But who knows? We don't know what everything was happening. But I think you're right. I think I think we're going to see. I mean, there's no ne- other reason at this point to stop show. it. Yeah, why yeah. would you? Because you're already Except in. that there's hopes to work again. Yeah, like, why we can, 
We Juicy. all should just get in business. I like it. I like our – okay. Did you hear oh, about this? I, lo- I want to learn how to do Photoshop. I was like, I – would love to Photoshop myself in every. Okay, so I have so many old <laughs> vacations. Aubrey, each... Aubrey O'Day from what was her group called? Danity Kane. I don't really think she. I'm sure she has an OnlyFans, but has she like worked or done like sung anything recently? No. She's a. If you check the Instagram bio, two time uh, platinum selling. Okay. So, there's but I'm that. just saying. I, well, I think she's it's huge, she but was I'm just super saying... relevant for being with Donald Trump Jr. Junior, that's right. Um. And because they got together, apparently, allegedly, while uh, she was doing The Apprentice, and he was working, he was on The Apprentice as well, and uh, he was married at the time. Now he's divorced, but that was the rumors in stories that she told, and where people put two and two together. This but is another I, perfect but, example of what we were just talking about. Her beef with Diddy, I feel like hurt. So much of her success as well. This is obviously, yeah. I could be wrong, but I remember her being very outspoken about being anti Diddy, who oh. was her label executive. And right. so, again. So she has an Instagram account, you know, and she, like everybody else this summer, it seems, if you follow big influencers, are, you know, on the cliffs of Greece and in the Amalfi Coast and all these places. And people were like, wait a minute, look at these photos. Like literally, she just like plopped herself a beautiful like, like <laughs> in, like in the middle of, it was literally like, it's almost like a joke. Almost like you took like a cutout paper of a person and like stuck it on a poster. It's or so stood bad. in front of like a background out yes. like at the mall. <laughs> yes, it looks so bad. And so, you know, people started to talk about it. I, she immediately like removed it all. And but then she started posting like all these videos from being in Bali at one time, yes, like it was current and like ha- like talking over it and yeah. But I love I now love stuff she, like now this she's so much. doubling down like, and she's being I'm an like artist. I'm an artist and part of my art is taking photos that I did at a photo shoot. <laughs> Like taking (laughs) professional photos that I did for like an album cover and plopping it in the backdrop of Greece on a perfectly beautiful day. And like I'm a graphic designer. Yeah, I never. Yeah, I never was claiming. I wanted to do a TikTok today doing this, but I don't know how to do Photoshop. But I wanted to do a TikTok of like me at all these like rituals, vacations. (laughs) Remember, like when they discovered like. Um, I feel like there's another doc coming out about this, about how people... Oh, fake, no, I know what it is. Plane, yeah, the there's a movie jet. coming out about how a girl wants to be a social influencer, so she fakes everything, and she fakes herself like on a private plane, and she fakes herself in Paris. And while she's faking being in Paris, there's like a terrorist attack, like right where she said she was. So then she... Ha- comes back and now gets all this press as the influencer that survived this like terrorist attack. That is such a juicy storyline, oh right? I forgot the name of the It's coming out, but I will definitely see it. And that will also be Juicy Scoop homework. And everyone will need to watch it. But, like, yeah, I mean, it's 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 really funny. But, like, people have done that a lot or try to act like it's a private jet or whatever, you know. But hilarious. I like it. Okay. Did you see this? Oh, I did a TikTok. Oh, I haven't seen this main okay, post. But this, I did a whole TikTok. About – go on. About um, – because I saw – uh, Jay went on. This is Jay Cutler. We're Jay talking Keller, about former Kristen husband Cavallari. of Chris Cavallari's husband. Yeah, major player. NFL player. Yes. Um, so he went on the rival podcast, Sophia's Sophia yeah. to call her daddy that right. Kristen had just gone on, which and, you had gone on. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I wish I had gone on anybody's podcast that wants to make me famous for a day. Um, so yes, don't dilute your brand and make me not want to invite you back. No, I'm don't just saying. Don't be a whore. I, I, I Call this, her daddy. I, I don't just, blame you. Okay. Go on I, that one. I just had this conversation about yeah. I never imagined the podcast world being so uh, highly competitive. Yes. You know, but, you know, I, I'm not in it as much as I'd like to be because right. Justin obviously takes my spot all the time, you know, because <laughs> he's funny and actually a comedian. Um, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. So, no, of course, I went on 
you know, call her daddy. Call her daddy. Yeah. But I now say no to a lot because I risk, you know, losing my spot to Justin, who is here just all the time <laughs> um, and going on the boat and doing podcasts. But so, yes, I went on Call Her Daddy. Yeah. It was amazing. Ends up she dates. I know I went to high school with her who? secret. Alex. Um, Alex's the secret boyfriend. boyfriend. Oh, okay, I won't, cool. I won't narc him out, but it was. Yeah. I was like, oh wow, you're trusting me with this secret? Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Shh. <laughs> Be quiet, sister. Um, so. <laughs> uh, so yes, Jay went on the Caller Daddy's Nemesis right. podcast, and I. This is how sensitive I now know all podcast hosts are. I wanted to do this TikTok, and I actually messaged my TikTok to Alex like. Am I allowed to post a TikTok where I have your, like, former... Former co-host. Yeah, and she's yeah. like, yeah, whatever. And I was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know. Yeah, All of a sudden, yeah. I'm never on Call Her Daddy because I did that, you know? Yeah. So she said, yeah. So my TikTok was referencing that I watched all of, um, not, it was very cavalier. I called it Uncommon yes. James on my TikTok. Everyone's like, you never watch... So I watched all the episodes. I loved it. Her, her, her show. Her and show. on it, Jay plays, like... I don't want any of these cameras. I don't. But now, when you realize he just wanted them only on him, juicy. And, you know, if you really look at the city, he now has his own jewelry line and his oh, own clothing that. line, and doing his own brand. And it's just like he d- couldn't handle Kristen's. It's all my opinion. Uh, you know, I don't yeah. like Jay. I interacted with him, and I was like, "This is the worst guy ever." And I've met a lot of horrible people. And what is, so, so you're, why do you think they even like got together? Do you think they just got together, so, got pregnant, and then just, like, we're in this? Yeah, I think the story yeah. is he was pursuing her heavily through a publicist like, uh-huh. after her and clout and fame and and just, you know. And I think, you know, they broke up and it was not happening. I think she said, I'm not like, this isn't a scoop, and then got pregnant, and then they tried it. And she got pregnant twice more yeah. times. And then, that, you know, more kids, I guess, don't make it work. And, no, and, I mean, I mean, it uh, doesn't, but it it does make you go. It makes you oftentimes, you know, go longer, longer try yeah, harder, yeah. hope, hope, yeah. like, oh, well, the new house and the new business, and you know what? I remember the little bit that I watched the show. I definitely not a a cuddly couple. Like you oh. could definitely see. Like I thought they were both gorgeous, and I thought they both like had fun quips, but like not a chem- not like a chemistry together. And so, um, yeah, because he he, he kind of comes off. He comes off really dickish, but I mean, maybe I'm sure he's nice to other people. Well, now he looks so nice in all these interviews and on right. his TikTok. I'm like, who? It's fascinating. So, right. Thankfully, Kristen loved my TikTok. She actually, you know, this is a scoop. She DM'd me and wrote, I fucking love you, Spencer. So, oh, good. So, there you go. So, National Football Memes wrote this a true hero. So, this is what Jay once said about connecting with his fans. People approach me all the time and ask if I have any regrets about my career. I tell them the same thing every time. I regret not telling more friends to fuck off while I was playing. (laughs) So I didn't appear approachable enough in retirement to ask me stupid fucking questions like if I have any regrets about my career. My only regret is that you once had a teacher dumb enough to tell you there aren't stupid questions. There's really fucking stupid questions. You're asking me one right now. I have to say pretty beautifully said. Pretty like pretty clever, pretty smart. But when you think about it, that is pretty rude to say to like a football player or somebody. Well, I, it's a real question. Cause I was just asking Heidi this the other night <laughs> about him. Cause I was trying to really figure out how somebody that was supposed to be this superstar, you know, you know, Tom Brady, he was like right. hyped up, like how he failed so much. Yeah. And so we started thinking, was it, this marriage and they, you know, who knows the behind the scenes drama because it's, it's, it's not usual that somebody that gets a hundred million dollars is such a failure, you know, necessarily in sports from my you knowledge. Know, in, in like watching the football, this is like going full circle, watching the, that Manti Teo football thing. I really think a lot, most sports, but especially football, I think is like such where your heart and your head are. And it has to be aligned. And, like, I think if you're not there, it's like, you you know, so that that's why Tom Brady, who really seems to be, like, a really loving father and partner and everything, and, like, that, maybe that's why he is 
I mean, besides having talent, but like you can't just have the talent. Like you've got to have all those other things. And yeah, something in his heart and his head aren't totally. So I would ask up. in his mind. I would ask a really fucking stupid question, I guess, because I would be like, "You'd be the why? Are, why weren't you better? You know, like, <laughs> you know, like for real, like, yeah, like it's." And because if you look at anything related to him, his the fans for all of his teams hate him the most. So something like sm- the memes are like smoking Jake, like he's just smoking a cigarette, like doesn't give a f. Like yeah. So I, I mean, maybe someone for someone like him might have been like, God, you know, I have this beautiful wife who's not only famous but she's successful in her own right. I have these three perfect kids. We're really rich. People want us to. That were family goals or this that, and I'm fucking miserable. What's wrong with me? I mean, maybe he's like literally like that. Like, why? Why am I such like an? Why am I such like a grumpy piece of poo? So, <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's a good question. I, I love I, the photo. I, I would chose. not be grumpy with his bank account. That's what right. you know. It's like I wouldn't be on that. Uh, Sophia's podcast. I, that was my point of the TikTok. Oh, like if I had a hundred million dollars, you're not catching me on Sophia's podcast. Well, they had some chemistry, so I didn't know what was going on there. She's definitely got a boyfriend. On okay, my well, I'm just saying. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. I just wanted to ask you about, okay, so this, so speaking of which, so this guy, Steven, that was, that was Kristen's love on the Laguna Beach. Now they're doing a show about it. Um, so have you listened to it at all? Because you weren't on Laguna Beach. I wasn't, no, I'm not. Uh, Do you I know am, these players gonna, being that you were oh, just on yeah, the hills? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm definitely going to listen yeah. to make TikToks and get, you know, clout. And, get clout. I did, I, did one, uh, I did one TikTok even reference this, and I think it, you know, did a million plus. I was like, oh, I'm going to do a whole <laughs> recap of their recap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me recap that podcast. I uh, like it. But, yeah, I love it because I know how much this must hate LC. So it's like my favorite podcast. Oh, because you like Kristen, but you still I mean, have I don't, beef with Not Elf. beef, um, but I do enjoy the fact that if you go back and they talk it through, right. like they were in the relationship and, you know, Elle, like I rewatched the show because before they recapped it, Heidi and I podcast recapped it. It wasn't as exciting, obviously. Right. And so I did watch this first season. I was like, this is nuts how Elsie comes in on this relationship as this third, you know, on Laguna Beach. Yeah, on Laguna yeah. Beach. So I love that it's being brought back because it's like, oh, I'll see this innocent, this sweet little I'll see. It's like, oh, let's have. So I hope they're talking about. Yeah. I, I don't think Kristen's holding her, you know, tongue like about this. So I do need to listen. But I mean, I do think it's really fun if you watched it and then, you know, if you're a fan of all this stuff, it yeah, is right kind of juicy the new to episode, see. So they're in Cabo. Now, I talk a lot about Britney Spears, but I just want to talk. I haven't talked about her in a little bit. I haven't talked about her with you in a while. So this is this is fresh because Heidi and I were just listening to the audio tapes of the, her talking to her kids and right. And so let me just get people because we. I don't know if I. I talked a little bit. Well, first I ta- last time I talked about her, I said I didn't like that she posted about saying like um, I'm fine with the boys not coming over anymore. I don't want. I have dogs and I have a pool and I have a husband. I don't need to worry whether you're coming or not. And then when you come, you just go in your room. And as like a mom of teenage boys, I was like, I just think that's such a mistake. And I don't think you got to give your boys, you got to give your kid. It's not about you as the parent. You got to fucking suck it up. It's like when Alec Baldwin called Ireland Baldwin and called her a little pig. She like skipped their weekend. Like shut up. Okay. You're. Your divorced parents, your kid is a teen, and magnify it by Hollywood. Like, just so then, right after that, is when Kevin Federline released these tapes of where she was um, talking to the boys, and the boys had taped her talking to them and scolding them on their iPhone. Now, when I first heard it, I was like, mm. then I listened to it again, and pretty much the consensus was like, we're pro Britney. Like a lot of moms were like, we get it, the frustration you have and everything. So it definitely, I don't think made Kevin look good for releasing them. What did you think? You felt differently? No, they weren't 
enough to be like, oh my gosh, yeah. You know, I I just got a kick out of that she was one of the arguments where she was like, you're embarrassing me not wearing shoes into something. I'm like coming from the girl that's famous for like not wearing oh, shoes that's right. in no, the she public. Said, she bathroom. goes, what? Is, yeah, you're right. She goes, what is wrong? But I think she was saying because they were in Alaska. Now I don't know if it was the winter of Alaska or summer of Alaska. She goes, yes, because. What is wrong with you, Jaden? You're in an ice cream shop with no shoes on in Alaska. What is wrong with you? And you're right. I totally forgot about the fact that she was barefoot at every gas Pub- station. Bathroom. You're right. So that I, that's that the type of funny. stuff I get a kick out of. But, oh, my God. I totally um, forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like any of that that it went. And here's, like, my thought process with that. I was like, well, I hope not, but the dad is going to start looking not good here in a second. Kevin. But if, no, uh, Brittany's dad. Like, if oh, keeps, Jamie. I'm just worried that, like... Well, Jamie looks bad now. No, no like, I'm worried he's going to start looking like he oh, wasn't... Oh, if, he's going to look start looking like, good if it just that starts he protected. Go, like, if it just starts going... Like, that was kind of like, like, you know... I like, like, maybe some people will be like, maybe yeah. Jamie, the dad, did know it was best for Brittany. That was, yeah. like, that was con- my concern, which obviously is not so many things. But you start airing out your teenage sons on social media. This is like, whoa... Right. Well, I think um, – I mean, I but I think they both looked bad in that because the kids should always come first. My first actual thought because I have so much uh, unreleased Kevin Federline footage that I wanted to go through. And I was like, do I have something of him talking smack about – like, you know, I wanted to like, counter it and post it. Well, I, I did see a video of like some porn star that was on Howard Stern um, years ago where she talked about how she slept with Kevin, with Kevin Federline and that they did it on the kid's baby blanket – the kids, like, weren't watching, but she was just – and so people were like, really? And Kevin's supposed to be this, like, great parent? Or maybe the kid was present, but, like, they were asleep or something, and she snuck over, and they, like, boned in the playroom. I don't know. So, but, like uh, – I was like, do I have these tapes? Where are my tapes? So what is what is he saying? Can't well, no, I have – I filmed – so for – when Kevin and Brittany first, like, got together, right. Brody and I were still living at Casablanca – uh, David Foster's yes. mansion and Sarah Malibu. Retreat. Yeah. And Brittany was the next door neighbor. So we were hanging out with Kevin Federline every day because he was using using David's recording studio to do his rap album. And this Amazing. is when he was so famous. So right. I just have my camera that I was just filming Prince of Album. I was like, I'm just pointing it, hoping... I'm, in my head, I'm thinking maybe I get the Kevin Federline Brittany show. This is before they even dropped that they chaotic did. Yes, thing they eventually. did have like so, a 13 episode yeah, weird Yeah, so I was UPN thinking thing. this before that even happened. I was like, ooh, maybe I can get in. So I have so much footage, and I, but I never, Brittany did come over a couple times, but yeah. I didn't, I was like, didn't pop up the camera yet. But so, yeah. I, I, so I started racking my Aren't brain. Aren't you the one who told me, though, during those days that she would like just walk, walk in a, naked? Just walk in a look, yeah. full naked, I badge, there, full though, badge. But the two people that I definitely believe it was not like at the time this was so, you know, as Brittany, like just walked down the stairs butt naked. Knowing people were yeah, there. Was, not like, oops, no. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I'm not, which is, I support all that energy, whatever you want to do. It's great. I'm not judging anyone. But based off of what she posts on IG, how much she loves being naked. Yeah. It now to me, I'm like, they weren't lying. Right. You know. Like, she likes being naked. And I I cannot figure out if she does not know OnlyFans would – she'd make millions. Just in, like in a day, because even with the photos she's posting on Instagram where she like puts a star on her nipple. Like, So I'm wondering if she gets so much money from IG because you do get paid on reels. So maybe she thinks mm. like she's making so much money on her reels. So like if I got – I hope she's making money that's from a, This it. is so much like, money. I'm like – you do this on OnlyFans without going full naked, and you have so much money. Like we're, like so I mean, I'm just have a po- photo of her here. It's in what appears to be that same Cheesecake Factory house, and like literally the top could see through. Could this is not OnlyFans. be like, a 99 cent, d- d- you know, like not even a dollar top. But here's my thing. I thought this girl backwards Barbie Woods. I think it is. Backward, backwoods Barbie. That's about, and anyway, um, I you know she she does like a lot of deep deep dives and stuff, and she's not the only one that I've heard this from. Is that they no one has found the marriage license of her, between she and Sam. If somebody hasn't correct me, correct me. I'm not saying I'm 100 percent you know CNN news source, but like so and there are Hollywood stars that get 
married, but they don't really get married because of like financial situations. So I think that's weird. I also think it's weird that there was um, one time she went out and she was with this assistant named Vicky and she was like, finally, I can have a glass of wine. I'm having wine at a restaurant and da 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 at like out in Thousand Oaks or Westlake somewhere. And I'm like, there isn't one person in this restaurant that like took a photo, did a TikTok about it, said I was there. I waited on her. She was great. Not one paparazzi got a photo, not one person taking a photo and giving it to someone. If she's able to like go out and get her nails done and say all the things she wanted, why has no one said I've seen her out? It's weird, but then I just watched a TikTok about, uh, I think Perez posted, and I didn't, it was hard for me to even believe, but he was saying that Taylor Swift has a full life where she goes out and does things and people, and I was like, that's, I don't believe that. What do you I, mean? She goes at her restaurant and the whole restaurant gets paid off? Not no, to like talk they about like it, know or? to like these, like they respect. I don't, there's no I, way said, in this day like, and age when every single I'm person is out a doing on anyone, and and that there isn't somebody that's just even doing a positive little TikTok about how I saw Brittany have her first glass of wine out. There isn't one like what is it? And then I'm like, and where is that Vicky girl? Because I one time did something about how Chris and I saw a fo- one of her spinning photos, and in the back there appeared to be a, a dog shit, like a little dog shit. And we're like, okay, come on, you know, like, really, you're posting a photo of the dog shit. Anyway, she posted, the Vicky girl, under my video. It wasn't a dog shit. It was a a leaf. I know because I took the video. And I'm like, well, if you're taking the video and you're the assistant, get the fucking leaf out of the way, okay? Like, you're not doing a great job. Anyway, I don't know where that Vicky girl is now. Like, I, I just, there's something so, I don't know, like, I thought we cracked the case, and then she was freed. And now I feel like there's a whole nother K. I really don't know what's going. I really don't know what's going on. But I think it's so bizarre that she's supposedly in this new house. But we're only seeing videos of the old house. And like these, and she's still doing all the strange posts. And But she's not. And then what was this Elton John song? Someone's like, here's the Elton John song. But then I never heard it again. I, Did I, she do the Elton John song? I mean, I heard the El- I I thought I heard it, but But are you hearing it on the radio or anything? Like I listen to normal radio and I'm not hearing it. No, but maybe I'm missing it. Anyway, I, I wish her all the best. I am not like ripping on her. I'm just like, I just don't understand what's going on here. Did you already address the whole Selena Gomez, like sub shade where Selena Gomez wear the like shirt with like the mental health or something? No, what was that? And then it ends up, she's like started thinking that her mom was like working with Selena Gomez and like, who did Britney? Yeah, you didn't catch Britney. Th- Wait, just explain from the beginning it's what you're like, trying to now say. Now my brain is three weeks old on it, so yeah, it's, it's old scoop. Um, but <laughs> pretty much in totally convoluted, mixed up way, Selena Gomez was at the wedding, yes. and then did wore something about like mental health, a shirt, and then like Britney posted something saying that you know, oh Selena and my mom, da da. I'm, I'm going to miss this up too she much. She thought Selena and her mom were like, In it yeah. together and like, like the mom was working through Selena to like help with Britney. I mean, it's just weird. I, I but just, then another thing that I, uh, Heidi got a kick out of that she like did a post about like, I don't need famous people, da, 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 da. But like, yeah, only people at your wedding were like clout people. Right, like Madonna and yeah, everybody. Yeah, like it was literally and just clout people yeah. at your wedding, but then you do a post like, I don't need this industry, all these fame. And I was like, wait. Then. I almost feel like she like woke up like nine days or five, a week before the wedding was like, I want to get married today, daddy. Like, I feel like it's very much like Charlie and the Chalk Factory with a, what was the girl thing? That was, yeah, with Violet. And like, everyone's just like, all right, okay, t- we get married today, you know? And like, and then she gets married and like, where's the marriage license? And everyone just goes and okay. And then like, Sam like, is like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym for four hours. You spin. And then I come back and we, we watch a movie. Okay. And like, I'm just like, what? It just seems so bizarre. Okay. Um, this was kind of interesting. So you've heard about the Jeanette McCurdy book. Have you heard about it? 
She was from Sam and Cat, that Nickelodeon show. Oh, she's the one that wrote the and the talked wrote about uh, Ariana Grande. And yes, then, like, and those photos were wild. I started getting creeped out. Oh, oh, about all the Dan Schneider stuff, yeah. the producer of it, and how he's obsessed with the, the foot fetish, and so Ugh. so disgusting. Ugh. And were it, parents not watching the show? And like, I guess. Parents aren't. You know what's interesting, and I don't mean to pat myself on the back, but I will. But I remember when those shows were on because I have older kids, and I remember I was like, I don't like these shows. Why is this? Why are there storylines about a twelve-year-old that has like a wig on? Like she had like long blonde hair, fake eyelashes, full makeup. She looked like she was forty, and she's supposed to be like. And they'd be like fighting about how like their thirteen-year-old boyfriend cheated on them, and they're going to catch him cheating. And I'm like, wait, what? Like. Who has relationships like this? And everyone just watched the shows because, I mean, that's what it is. You just get fed this stuff, and then all of a sudden in your brain, you're like, oh, I guess it is normal to do this or whatever. So her book is really, really good, and part of it in it was like her saying, um, you know, I didn't really want to be a child star, this Jeanette. I didn't want to act as a kid, but my mom wanted to. And so she may put her dream on her daughter. And even when she tried to say, Mom, I don't really want to do this anymore, she was like, would give so much pressure. She's like, but you love it. You love it. You're so good at it. You have to do it. You love it. What are you talking about? And then she's like, okay, I guess I love it. And so it's kind of interesting to think of like other child stars where they oftentimes they defend their childhood and they go, no, I begged my mother to do this, you know? And you're like, but did you? Like, I don't know. It's just so, it's like so strange. And so I came across this Amanda Bynes who's suffered a lot of mental issues. And um, I remember the first time I saw Amanda Bynes, is my, I had this manager and I was doing stand up and she, she put in this VHS tape and she goes, You got to see this kid. She just did stand up at the Laugh Factory. And like someone wrote her an act and she did stand up at the Laugh Factory and then she was like discovered and she had all these shows. And in this particular interview I saw on TikTok, they were like, they said after she played She's the Man, she w thought she looked so – she hated so much the way she looked like as a boy because they had her pretend to be a boy, which obviously could never work today. Like, you know, it was like a tootsie type of a situation or white mm -hmm. chicks for that matter where she's pretending to be the opposite sex. And um, and she – that she like had an identity crisis because of it. And that's kind of where then she – that was sort of like the last thing she did. So crazy, and I'm like, ugh. Anyway, I, I think it's really interesting when I think about the Selena Gomez, the Britney, well, and Demi Lovato I, now just I is am talking a about dadager, her and I have a child star. So one of my things as a you know a parent okay. to a child stars, I always try to say, would you like to be in this photo? Do you want to be in this video? And Gunner will say yes or no. Sometimes he'll say, no, I don't want to be in it, or, or he'll say, yeah, film me. You know, I'm okay. So we already set. You know, I mean, be... I l I love that, but like that, and I think you're treating it great because I think a lot of parents are having the luxury of exploiting their kids without the the rules that there are for like if they got a sitcom role or something where they their money goes, you know, um, the Coogan Law or whatever it's called, where that they can't just take their money like they could in the past. But like when I was a child, I was I had an, an agent, and my so did my sisters. And um, my one sister was blonde and blue eyed, and had freckles, and she booked all the time. My sister Shannon, and I like never booked, and and my mom did make me feel kind of bad about it. I mean, like she like I remember I would just be so tired by the time she put my hair in pigtails, and then put me in these overalls, and then drove me from Woodland Hills to like Hollywood and Vine. And then I waited in this long line, and then I'd come in this room, and they'd be like, "What's your favorite something?" And I'd be like, "I don't know." And they'd be like, "They get rid of me." And then I'd be like dancing and doing characters at home, and my mom would be like, "Why can't you do this on an audition? I wasted my whole day taking you there." And I was like, "Oh my god, you're right." And so, you know, and then also my, I mean, my sister, like, she made a lot of money at commercials, and I mean, we did get an audition after that to our house. So, I mean, I mean she's did, fine. And did you like going they in that paid. part of the house? I mean, like, <laughs> was it a TV room? 
<laughs> but I mean, it was like, but I kind of did think about how like I did feel like, wow, I really wasted my mom's time by not booking this thing. And I'm like to look ba- and I wasn't even doing it much. Like at, shortly after that, my mom got into real estate because she was like, you guys aren't going to pay for it. Like I got to make some real so estate So we money. made the Hills pay Gunner. So he had a bank account. So he yes. got all the money. We didn't take a cut. So I'm not like a percentage taker. No, down, but I'm sure. saying like, I think in your situation, it's different than like really where the kid has to like learn on the lines and oh, go yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. for some kids it's like some kids become Ron Howard but very few do like you know and it's like another one's struggle maybe he regrets it too that maybe he's like I was supposed to be something different I doubt that because then Bryce got to benefit from it too anyway who's um, Bryce? Bryce Howard his daughter oh like I mean come on is she on the... yeah she's in the Jurassic Park thing oh, bitching that she's oh, not making oh, as much as Chris Pratt that makes that story so much better. Yeah. Just tell your dad to call somebody. <laughs> yeah. like, maybe your dad told him not to pay you too much to, because he didn't want it to look like nepotism. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Wow. That, thank you for that. So um, I, we just saw Chris Pratt. At, where? At the farmer's market. Did you say hi? Of course. He's my cousin. In real life? As far as anybody ever asked me, yes. And on all <laughs> interviews for the rest of my life. Is there any connection? Do you know? I mean, we can't not have the same last name and not be connected. So, you know, I don't... I but you've never I really done it. you I mean, it I out? haven't, like, studied our, our you, tree. You need to be on what... Uh, do you know who you really are? What's that show? With him. Yeah, yeah, or what if they figured it he out? Says, that you guys are he like did fourth. say that when people ask him, are we related? He says yes, even if he's just making me feel better about it. But he has said that, which That's made me nice. a Chris Pratt fan forever. <laughs> I love it. But I made sure, because Gunnar loves Jurassic Park. That's how Gunnar only called him Owen. And then he was like... It was amazing. Aww. But, uh, yeah, it was... That's really cute. I know he was so... His wife was so scared that Heidi and I were going to like film them and like she I know I could feel that she and did. his wife is the Schwarzenegger Correct. daughter and what's ener- her name again Kath- Catherine. Catherine yeah and yeah. the energy you know I have psychic powers and yes. I knew like psychic hits like please don't ask for a photo please don't video yes. you know and I was just I felt it so hard that I made a point to not put them on any of my stories which do you feel like or a tiktok that would have been just a banger tiktok cousins at the farmer's market like oh it was so hard do you feel like sometimes when people come up to you um you almost want to just cut to the chase and go you want to get a photo i start with that yeah right when somebody comes up i go do you want to get a photo or a video why else are we chatting let's get some content (laughs) oh my god i love it let's save everyone's day let's move the hell on but then they Recently, we had some a nice drunk lady at Don Antonio's sit down for half the meal, and it was like Gunner finally said, "Like, is she gonna leave?" I was like, "Gunner, don't be rude." <laughs> like, but she was very nice and drunk, but it was a long, long chat. I once sat down with a uh, Jerry Seinfeld and this writer guy, and it what? still haunts me to this day. That, I, I no, s- when I was like not. Famous or anything. When I was just a thirsty bitch hoping that he might want to date me. I did like, that with Jennifer really, Anderson. Like he really wanted to hear about some young female comic that hadn't made a dollar mm. in the business. No. I mean, but then when it's happened to me, I am like, oh, my God, I know this person is so good hearted. But like, honestly, could we just. I wasn't good hearted. I just sat down drunk with Jennifer Anderson right when she like found out that she was being cheated on and was like with right. with Angelina. And, oh. and I was like, Angelina is horrible. You deserve so much better. Da, 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 da. Brody's well, the witness to this. this and then how do you story. feel about now? They're in the news about their breakup and now we know that from the, the reports that he actually was pretty volatile and angry, if you want to believe the reports, in the plane. Brad Pitt. I, I don't trust Maddox. I'll keep my story going. I don't, I don't. Maddox seems. So the story is that we now know about the infamous plane fl- flight. Well, we don't know. The files <laughs> haven't been released, unredacted. Well, what I've read of the reports is that they were on the private plane and they started to fight about something. And he said, your mom is going to ruin this family. They went into the bathroom to fight some more. And to argue. And he punched the ceiling like three times. And the kids were like, are you okay? Maybe that's when he said, your mom's going to ruin this family. And and I think that's when there might have been a confrontation with most likely Maddox between the two of them. And where they like felt they had to land the plane and everything. And that he had drank heavily that day. And she she didn't say he, 
I don't think he said he, she, he hit her, but he said like he grabbed her or he pushed her. And so she had in the reports, there were some visible like bruises, like on her back and stuff where like, maybe she could have been pushed into something. And, um, and he said, and he also said about one of their kids, I didn't say who that kid looks like a Columbine kid that was in it. And that was like, whoa. Like, that's when she was like, I'm done with that you. That was the line that I was like, this isn't a source quote. Like, that's too good of yeah, a like. Like a weird, like what? too specific yeah, like, of a what? thing. And that's when she was like, uh, we're done. And then he was probably like, you're going you're gonna to break us up? You, oh, your mom's going to ruin this family? Like, because she was just like, it was probably building up over the last few years of just her being like, mm, I'm not real happy. And so, um, yeah. So I think, but I think the final thing was that the FBI was not going to pursue it anymore and i don't know where they are in the just like long awful drawn out divorce the kids are all going to be 18 by the time they settle this custody battle so like like how many more years are there even left but it hey so yes if i see angelina i plan on sitting at the table and being like you know brad's horrible yeah, you shouldn't have stolen from Je- from Jen. Yeah, you yeah. guess guess we all saw this coming. <laughs> yeah, you got what you. Um, speaking of other horrible couples, Tom Girardi and Erica Jane's house, the auction. TMZ is saying the estate auction has started, and there's lots of stuff to sell, to buy art, a very expensive rare piano, um, all this other stuff. But I do want to say where in one of the episodes he goes, "I got you something for your eyes." She's like, "For my eyes." And it's, it's a Chagall, like some really expensive painting. And I just wonder where it is now, because they're saying if anything that might have been um, clearly purchased with the victim's money, which is basically everything, needs to be returned. And that's not on the list. I don't know what. Yeah. Like they're not mentioning that. I want to I know I mean, there that has is. to be, like we've said before, there has to be the buried suitcase in the back. You know, like, right? I don't know. Like, Maybe it oh, happens so fast. If she wasn't in on it. She didn't prepare. But Who knows? There's so many good stories. So there's so many. Juice. Okay, so you see Christine Quinn. Oh, I, no how longer, funny I am. No <laughs> longer coming back to um, Selling Sunset. And according to this article by the Daily Mail, Selling Sunset producers are scrambling to find a new villain after her departure. And they're thinking maybe um, Chelsea, the, the English girl from London, the pretty black girl, that maybe she would be. The villain. So yesterday, yes. I reached out to uh, the creator, Adam DeVillo's uh, representation, and I said, you know, as, as a good husband, you know, Heidi's about to pass the real estate. She just did the first three parts, and yeah. she just has one little thing left. How great would it be for Heidi to come on as the new villain on Selling Sunset? So, and what happened? What did they oh, say? We'll hear back. I'm, you know, I'm not old. But after breath. all your history with him, you In really the, think he wants to hire you again? I just, you know, I think it would show, you know, how bridges that have been burned can be rebuilt. You know, with I, with dollars, ex- uh, it's it's Hollywood. So you know, and I'm sure you know Christine Quinn would not want to hear this, but the reality is, she looks like she's doing very well financially and doesn't need to have a Netflix TV well, show. Well, I think that I think she's the one who chose. Oh, she to definitely. Leave. Yeah, so I watch I think, her story. Yeah. She doesn't need. So a camera. yeah, I think she's fine. Oh my, yeah. But um, I'm saying Heidi could benefit greatly right. from being on a Netflix series. So yes. The, I mean, I think it's going to happen. Listen, the, I, this will be some. You know, we'll all we'll all watch it. I felt the sec the last season was pretty dull to watch. Actually, I was pretty like bored by it. So I don't know if the if it's kind of like um, the crescendo know. might be down. But I think if Heidi joins, it could go yeah. back up. We'll, I think we'll you need to change. I think you need to change it up a little bit and like have some some different people and stuff. Well, I, she could sell some smaller houses. Yeah. You okay. Know, she could get in like trailer park type. You know. She can join. She goes. Well, there's what really I, expensive trailers in Malibu. Now, listen, I want to talk about this juicy story. It, well, this he is, is Brooklyn Beckham. He has over seventy tattoos dedicated to his young wife. Oh, I didn't. This is scoop. I didn't know this. One. And was, they've been saying how there's been stories about how Posh, his mom isn't as fond as the do- of the daughter-in-law, that the daughter-in-law has the Beckham name, that the daughter-in-law might be wanting to get into fashion. Other people say it's not true. Um, I just thought it was kind of interesting because then, you know those TikToks where someone goes around and they're like in getting into a gorgeous car and the guy's like, hey, I just want to know what do you do for a living? 
Now, I did not see this, but from what I gathered, somehow he was stopped doing that. And he goes, Brooklyn Beckham goes, oh, I'm a chef. And then chefs came out and were like, he's not a chef. Like, what? He's not, you know. And then this other guy. Well, he's a YouTube chef. Well, this other guy kind of did a joke about it. His name's Patrick Cashmore. <laughs> and he was like, I'm going to make my ham for my wife. And it was pretty funny. But he kind of said something before he did this bit. And he was like, you know, do we feel sorry for a kid that's like that privileged? Because now everyone's like, you're not a chef. You know, and it was just a photographer. And he said he was a photographer. And it's like all things that anyone can kind of do. Like, it's not like you have to go to school for it or, you know, become a dentist or learn how to be a plastic surgeon or be an architect or even be a developer, you know, like and really understand how to do it. Like, so, but at the same thing, I mean, what are these kids supposed to do? And then they fall in love and then his whole life is just loving this girl and tattooing. I mean, I don't know. It's like, it's... Even though he's so, so privileged in some ways, I did kind of feel badly for him that, like, everyone's making fun of his, of his chef thing. Just because he, like, what else is he going to say? I mean, I guess he could say, no, you know, nothing. I'm really lucky to be married, you know, born into, like, a super, super, two super successful parents. I mean, Well, she's probably, a billionaire. Right. And, and I married a billionaire yeah, so. wife. Like, <laughs> I mean, I just hope to be, like, a, a cute guy with tattoos and put some smiles on some faces. I don't know. What are you supposed to say? But, I mean, I think it might... The other son is like, you know, in the MLS and playing professional soccer. So that's also that's hard. That's a lot harder. If the brother's doing it and you're not. He should yeah. have sang. He yeah. Looked, he looks like a Harry Styles or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's cute. But I love that. Yeah. No, I just love the variety. I think it was a variety of Hollywood Reporter had him on the cover. And it was like the new uh, Brooklyn Beckham behind his cooking empire. You know, I was like, gosh, like... Right. I, I, I was cooking on Snapchat. But, and, he, and he was just really cooking? like No, he has like a YouTube channel now. And it's like, oh, that's where I But it chef. is. Yeah, it is but simple it's, stuff. I wouldn't say it's empire. Yeah. Yet. Um, I, I found this to be really interesting. You remember the Goslings? They were the. I do. Eight, I keep, Kate, I keep Kate telling Heidi eight. that. She's going to be H plus eight because she keeps wanting to have more kids. I'm like, what is happening here? Um, so. There were eight kids in Kate plus eight. They ended up hating each other, getting divorced. There were the two older twin girls who are 21 now. And then there's the six that are like 18 now. And two of the six left and lived with the dad. Um, One girl and one boy. And the boy, Colin, actually, you know, the mom was really mean and or supposedly was mean and, like, had him live in, like, a group home for a while. And the dad fought to get him out of the group home to live with him. And the kid seems to be doing much better now and lives with one of the sisters. And then she's got the four others. And he went out to say that she took um, both of their money, Colin and Hannah, who live with him, both of their money that they were, like, one one fifty from each of them. He said they t- when they were 18, she took it to buy this house that was, like, she put seven fifty down for and then she went on to defend herself and say, um, you know, what are you talking about? That I've, uh, I spent so much money. You owe me for child support. And I spent so much money on their private school and on their food and their uniforms. And people came forward and they were like, what are you saying? Like, that's not a kid's responsibility to pay for, like, their sixth grade education. Like, what the hell are you talking about? So um, anyway, I just thought, like. Just this is just so. This is now. I want to see this reality show. Like now, I want to see all the kids that now the kids are eighteen. Let's hear their story. Let's hear them like talk about it. They should go rewatching the episodes. Maybe that'd probably be too painful. Maybe not. Like Kristen and, and yeah, Steven, maybe it's yeah. too painful when you're just like a little kid being like having cameras chase you and your parents like bitch at each other. And your mom had that horrible hairdo. But that's probably too traumatic. We uh, dressed. <laughs> we did. Uh, we were them for Halloween. It was a great Halloween costume. Oh God, remember that? They're just miserable. Um, let me see what else I want to talk about. Uh, Pete Davidson is now stuck with the branding of Kim Kardashian's name for life because you can't get rid of the branding. You brand over it. No, you can't, unless you just want one big swelling thing. No, you. have an artist would take that and then make a new brand and include the, like if it said Kim or whatever, her initials, and they would make a new 
art piece. I think he just leave it. Who cares? It was I a pretty exciting time of his life. I love it because all the girls he's with now, I'm like, oh my god, my god, I'm Kim. this close to Kim Kardashian. Uh, so, also, it's like it's like right here, like on his chest, meshed around with a bunch of things. It's barely legible. All these guys with a thousand tattoos that like I got your name on. It's like where? Right? Yeah, like who um, cares? Yeah. So, Here's what's so funny. Somebody dead serious. I'm not going to say who. Alex, this guy. He uh, <laughs> he messaged me and he's like, did, uh, did Kim uh, beat up Pete? I'm like, what? And he's like, that's what they're talking about on set today. I'm like, I was like, is this like a – I haven't seen this on TikTok. I haven't seen – but like – that's how wild this world is. The people that was I, a rumor start that she beat him up. Maybe it was just on well, this do you remember set. How, there was a lot of video of where she she there's two times on the Kardashians where she beat like, up her sisters. One with the purse. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, stop being so fucking Courtney. rude. And then there was another one where she and Courtney and she had like a bob and like black lay, lather and reset. And she was they were like right. really beating the shit out of each other. And you know what? I did think it was weird. I thought it was like, wow, you know, like that you're so and I'm not accusing her of doing this to anyone else. <laughs> but her sister, those two times that we caught on video. Right. But I do think that I remember thinking, my God, like I've never. I mean, I mean, the last time I like put a hand on my sister, we were like eight. You know, I know and exact that, clip. I watched it like four times. Yeah, I was like, oh, this, I was like this. What this show is so good. Yeah, but it's kind of insane. But, so, but I, I mean, think that's probably where the rumor nah, started. But, but still, I was like, whoa. You know. um, speaking of Kim, this came up, and someone's like, "Can you please address this, Heather?" This is Kim with a bunch of designer bags around her, and she writes, "Who wants to shop?" Like me for $130,000. Yes, you guys, just like before, one of you can win $130,000 on a preloaded credit card to spend however you like, buy a new car, travel, shop. It's up to you. Biggest giveaway. And then add. And the comments were like, this one person said, I participated once and was inundated with spam. And now every time I think I've unsubscribed to all of them, they sell their email list again. And I have a whole new batch. It's infuriating. They don't mention they will sell your email to any advertisers. Uh, I got shadow banned for doing one of these a couple of years ago. Ever since. You mean you did it? Oh, I did one of these. Like a company paid uh, okay. paid me to do the exact same kind of thing. Giveaway, lap. The whole, and the whole thing exactly is, like the this. whole way you enter in the giveaway is that Comment. you follow a bunch of companies and the companies, you can't blame them, pay because they're like, oh my God, I'm starting a, a new brand and I need to at least have 50,000 followers. How do I get it? Oh, well, everyone pays whatever, $20,000 and, and we guarantee you'll get this many followers because these people will follow and most likely they won't stop following you, you know? So, so what happened? So I did that, got paid, and then within the next day, all my numbers, all my engagement just stopped. Like it goes to zero where only clearly you, I got flagged by the algorithm. And then the company's like, hey, can you change the tags? Those accounts were uh, deleted. So those accounts that were even being tagged get like deleted. You mean the, the, the actual that, brands? Yeah, that you're supposed to like come. So uh. that's how, you know – she got away with this, but this is not, you know, because she's Kim, but this is like an actual a controversial thing on Instagram where they're not down with these. But do do you know if anybody actually wins the $130,000? Because I was reading the comments and they're like, I think it's people they know. And like, where is that That's person? Like, where's the person? That, I'm the Kim, 130000 Yeah, like, if you were the person you got the 130000 why wouldn't you be doing a TikTok about it? And you're like, oh, my God, I did this thing. I got, here's my card. I got 130000 I know people don't think they're real, uh, but I literally did it. And you know what? If they're going to keep doing it, they should literally hire someone to, to win, do it. Or at least if nobody fake got win. it before, maybe have a fake winner, give or have. I don't know. I don't think anything should be deceptive. But, like, it's weird, just like the, just like the people that have never seen <laughs> Um, Brittany out having a glass of wine, like. So that's where, your whole conspiracy. I'm missing this. Like that, still since she's been released, she's not out and about. I don't think she's out and about. I don't. I mean, I thought about that wine dinner, and I'm like, I just can't believe that no one has been like, I saw her or we did this. But that's what I've been saying from day one. Why hasn't she gone shopping? Like rodeo, hit up all the spots. <laughs> Why doesn't she enter this thing? <laughs> I just tag Brittany. And the winner is, hey, y'all, it's me. <laughs> yeah, it's so strange. I'm like. So you did that thing once where you're like, shop for money. Ago, for shop I've, for money. And then after that, you're like, I won't take those deals yeah, anymore. Yeah, I've not. I've said no to which is hard because it's like a easy I mean, I'm, 5K, kind of, I'm honestly kind 10, of. She got $5 million for that. 
pro- I think she has to have gotten locked. Five but I'm actually was sort of surprised because I'm like, you know, and in going back, because I talked about Bethany's criticism of the Kardashians, and I was like, and then people were like, you defend oh, the Kardashians too much. what about the much. makeup thing? That was a little... No, but then she went off and was like, you know, when is it enough? How rich do you have to be? And like, she's a bad example for girls and all this other stuff. And I'm like... Listen, I just don't think anyone should throw a stone when we all live in glass houses. I mean, you like really, especially you that created a brand about called Skinny Girl, about being skinny and like, you know, and you have shapers that make you skinny and jeans that make you skinny and food and uh, even she had like a sandwich meat thing that was supposed to make you skinny. Like I was kind of like, okay, like I just kind of was like, just don't be a hypocrite about it. Whatever. You can just like, but um, I mean, sometimes I am kind of like. I know that sometimes the, the the dollars are so much, but I was I, I am kind of like at a certain point I would think that you would turn some stuff down, I Kim. Think, I think the reality is that's gone now. Like how what's gone? Like an Instagram executive told me that a post on Instagram now is literally like throwing because there's like two billion people now when they merge it, face like throwing a rock in the like a pebble in the ocean. So to even be an impact on anyone's timeline, you'd have to post six photos that day to like even. So she just put like we are seeing it, but did anyone else see it? And that's if you look at her engagement. What does she have? Two hundred million. Well, let's just wait. Yeah. Let's just go to like, it. So this was. No, wait, well, yeah, she has yeah, 470 yeah. million. Right. No, no, no. So if so, you're going to spend the money on it, wait, where's so, that photo? Out of her, out of her 200 million plus followers, 470,000 people clicked something to make it look like an engagement, which there's people, I like things I don't even look at. How many? Huh? Yeah, 329 million people and only 470,000 people, even 440,000 people like actually pretended like they engaged on it. Like I, I probably like that and don't even know. So right. she got $4 million for an invisible thing. Like that didn't imprint on anyone. Mm. So you and I are looking at it, but like, does it like this, did that phase her brand? No way. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my, I would say, t- I, maybe it was more than five. Like she could have got $10 million for that. I mean, I guess the thought of it's like, look, I don't know if anybody's going to win. But how much am I hurting anybody if they follow a bunch of brands that are just fashion and beauty related? Like, how is it going to hurt them? The only thing is that these people said, oh, but then you get in this like email thing. But I don't know if that's true either, because all she's saying is that you just have to follow them. And, you know, I guess you could unfollow them the next day. But if, if nobody knows who actually wins, I don't know. I just need to know that someone said they actually won. For that much money, somebody's better say they're winning. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And it's just a weird... I, I love her And right it's a weird amount. Like, it's a weird amount. What? Talking about her coming up. Can't say what, but it's a big thing. It's like... Oh, oh it's oh. going to be like some doc about it. Let's just say they know who to call. Okay, well, so, good. Yeah, so I'm a, yeah, yo, go Kim, yay. Like I said, I, I mean, I... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to like and follow when I get home and give them my email. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Do you understand about Andrew Tate? I do, and... So I didn't. So I'm scrolling TikTok to the point where you couldn't scroll TikTok more, you know, where you get the notifications. It's like, you've been on TikTok. I, oh, my God, for, I get that guy. I'm, and I'm like, like, shut get, up. Mind your business. I know. Like, I'm like, God. Judgy. I'm like, I know it's only 1120 and I started at 830, but leave me alone. There's so much knowledge here. There's so much knowledge. Yeah. I, I, we were recently with somebody and they were like, their marriage was not doing well. Mm. And he says, it's because my wife's scrolling on TikTok and Heidi looks over at me. I'm like, Whoa, whoa, it's like just like totally gay. Like, hey, like, relax. Like, it's like that. Like, she's like, I know how you feel. I'm like, you know how they feel. What you I like? honestly want to say, if you really want to get to know who your partner is or something, in a in like a fun way, be like, let's watch TikTok together. Go to their fall their for you and see what pops up. Like if you're a guy and all of a sudden all your girl is seeing is like girls that are like, I'm so happy I got divorced. I was married to a narcissist. You gotta like, be like, what the hell is going on? Because like it's whatever you you watch something of, then that's all that like c- keeps coming through. Like if you, so I hope what? you're wrong because all I'm seeing right now, and I thought it was like sponsored ads, but all I'm seeing right now are these women that have lost weight because their husband was cheating on them. I'm like, is this because like I've 
I, how does TikTok know I'm trying to lose weight? <laughs> yeah. like, what is this? Right, exactly. Um, but, um, so, yes, okay, Andrew so Tate. is all over TikTok, he, like, and he's been banned now from TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, everything. But when we say all over TikTok, it was the most coordinated, like... Wait, let me first uh, explain who he is, because uh, I feel like we've just started to uh, hear about... He was a kickbox, kickboxer. Thing, yes. And... He was on... He was on Celebrity Love Big... Island or Big Brother. Uh, yeah, Big Celebrity Brother, Big Brother. Big Brother. And he, I kept seeing him popping up as guests on podcasts and stuff and giving his like kind of what they call this like, m- like rejuvenation of masculine energy and misogynistic. Yes. And he started this um, school like Hustlers University, which is you pay like $40 a month. And but it's but also you can make money by recruiting people to also join. So it had that uh, multi level marketing element to it. And you're supposed to get great knowledge of how to learn about how to make more money, whether it's stocks or crypto. And and then and then there's other other part where he talks about like how it, how to take control of your your romantic relationship with women that many people felt were really anti women, very misogynistic really quite dangerous. And so now explain how he was banned by everything. Yeah. Right now on TikTok now, if you, any re-uploads, so he actually didn't have an account like in, on TikTok. Oh, these were all uploads of his videos, which I, the first one I saw this, my initial thought was, God, I wish back in the Hills day there was social media and I had paid and done this to, with Spidey content and like flooded, the, you know, because I mean, you'd never see anything like it. He came like if he was an album being launched, yes. it was the most amazing marketing, just tsunami of content I've ever seen. I just saw him everywhere. Just, I was like, yeah. this is, it's like he took over, you know, it was the brilliance behind the actual so that's what makes me think we're going to see a documentary coming on Netflix how he did this well like it, my my son was kind of like you know what do you think of it you know and i was like well I, let me investigate like i didn't know you know and there's like um like this t- this is the rise of this was um slightly this anyway this i have it on my youtube but where i can it was a tiktok thing i found the rise of Andrew Tate is ruining my freshman boys. So this teacher wrote, have you heard of this sexist, misogynistic, disgusting excuse of a human being known as Andrew Tate? Well, I promise you, all your middle school and high school boys have. They're addicted to the content. Just this week, I had six combos with families about their sons saying shit like women are inferior to men. Women belong in the kitchen. Ms. da, da, da. So th- they feel like it's that type of thing that got him banned, that people were like, this is like so scary and dangerous. I'm thinking... He was, it's like he looked around and was like, you know what no one's doing is emasculating. You know, everyone talks about, like, don't emasculate men. Don't emasculate men. He kind of took it and was like, I'm going to emasculate men. And I'm going to do this thing that nobody else is really doing. Because there's a million women that are like, girl power, empower women. There's a million things of that. And there really isn't, and even like a Tony Robbins is not as, for a, a specific demographic. So he basically f- found this specific demographic that nobody else was doing this. I don't even know that he truly feels this way. I think he just knew what would like get people to like, you know, react. And now I'm like, what's going to be his next move now? I think he made so much money. He he's out. Like he could be out. Forever. I, think, in I life. mean, I, he made millions. If he had 80,000 people paying $40, <laughs> but they did say there's no proof of how many people did this. But now, why would, so then he must have shut down. Why would he, isn't he in charge of the Hustler University? Like, why is it that they said that he shut it down? Lawsuits, probably. Maybe. I didn't know that part. I knew he'd been taken down. I, I mean, my son understood it. He's 19 to be, he's like, no, he has this class where he teaches you how to, make money that's what he was told it wasn't like no he has this yeah, class that teaches you women. how to like yeah get a girl to do your, the dishes like his view was that and i'm thinking like wait i thought this guy was just like kind of empowering men to like whatever take control of their lives i didn't know that it was like such a negative thing but you're right maybe he made so much money off just doing this for a few months or whatever i mean i of course, I always put myself in this. I was like, why didn't I think of that? Like, you know, it was so 
it was so obvious. He was just right. saying just outlandish. You know, I don't know every quote, so I don't need people like DMing right. me like he said this. But it's no, like exactly. just I mean, stuff I'm sure, that was I'm just I'm sure like, he there. said awful, uncontroversial stuff. But like it was kind of like in the last couple of weeks where you're just like seeing it and hearing oh. it. And you're kind of like, what is this? And so now we know. He just went on. I watched a, half of it where he went on the Nelk Boys with the big YouTube guys. And... I mean, he's clearly a genius. You know, like, his dad was the most famous, like, I don't know. You no, know, his dad you know, could remember everything. Yeah, his dad right? saw that clip. Clo- you know, and they, and they, and everything he said, they fact check, like, uh, Andrew Tate said he was this top chess guy, and they found him winning. The, so, in all his, like, BS, there was so many, like, big, like, whoa, like, that's true. Like, yeah. So, it, it it's. I can't wait for the documentary. I mean, I think there is something, and even if it's controversial, where someone kind of sits around and all of a sudden they're like, "You know what no one's doing?" And if you're like the first one that comes up with that, like, then go, like, all right, you know. But I mean, hopefully it's not a hate group. But they felt this was almost a hate group against women. So I don't know. I don't know enough about it. So yeah, like, don't yeah, come that's after right, me. That's that. exactly. I'm, I'm fine like, uh, that he's gone. I my like son, views. My son didn't <laughs> sign up. I literally just asked him about it. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that he yeah. didn't, but I was just kind of curious, yeah. like, what is the deal, you know? And, and are your friends thinking he's great? And he was like, no, I think no one's going to pay $40 for that. So that was my point. I just yes. was so impressed that he didn't have an account in my whole for your page and every page and everything was just to the point where that's what the Nelk boys were saying. Like, can you maintain, do you think you can, are you just 15 minutes? But it was such a powerful 15 minutes of content. Oh, this was the last story. Apple Martin, which, by the way, written out, hashtag Apple Martin, that's Gwyneth Paltrow's daughter. It's like, if you just add an I at the end, her name would be Apple Martini. <laughs> that's <laughs> uh, they should have just... Anyway, she had a big party at the Hamptons brand. house. She had a big party at the Hamptons house. And who really cares? I just, I had that in there. Let's well, go back to your life, because we got to wrap it up. Oh, back to my life. So... You guys are having your funny second part of this boy story. Of, so, of this is yeah, Heidi's photo you were shoot. About yeah. like you know, let me say this delicately. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was said to Heidi, I was like, "Oh, great, you're going to do the shoot. Like, make sure you get all the rights to the photos." She's like, "Oh, this person, you get all the rights to the photos." Yeah, like, oh, just like, okay, you know. And she's we'll like, "Make sure it's on her Instagram." No, 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 yeah, yeah, okay. You know, that's just yeah. my thought. Anytime you go do a shoot or like, yeah. if you ta- I said, if you talked about the right, like, you know, you're right. going to get naked. Right. Like who, won't, you know, so she's like, no, it's no big deal, whatever. And then some people started texting her like, oh my God, I love the, your shoot. She's like, huh? And the photographer had posted it as two, two of the videos as reels without even showing Heidi. And so these are reposts of, oh. and I was just, so it's back to like, you know, when you like, who just, owns it or, yeah, or, just or like, God who's forbid, getting, who's yeah, getting the views it, if you're yeah. going to even get naked and get clout like make sure you get the, all, all the views as right, and I said you do it yourself. I like hey because hey. she's like she already was with you I'm like well you if you're not clear it's if I'm her I'm posting them too I, well, I love it um, tell everybody where how they can use their Juicy yeah, just, a d- d- uh, discount. Just go. Let me just reconfirm just, it's just Juicy when I think it's just Juicy, juicy. I think so I told you that you go to and to be honest, I didn't know it was still there because we rarely ever do – like 20% off is like usually like 4th of July. Okay. So you're currently like a, a reoccurring 4th Great. of July level sale. That's at awesome. .com, so. I love yeah. it. And just make sure you you know follow my TikToks. Um, your TikToks, you're getting way more active. I'm very impressed. Well, Annie is doing a yeah, great it's, job, like, and I, we're it's growing. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. growing. So, I love yeah. it. All, All right. right, thank you so Bye. much for. I love uh, you too. Come back. And See ya. Hopefully, I'll be on the boat next time. Yeah, absolutely.